Hello everyone and welcome to this week's garden tour. This is week four of the garden tour series and we have a few big changes in the garden. First of all, we had some rain this week, which was amazing. We hadn't had rain in a while actually. And last garden tour I also mentioned that the garden was in kind of a transition, especially here in the backyard because I am now trying to transition more from my cool weather crops that I grew so many, cool season flowers, to the warm season flowers. And we are also only four weeks out of our wedding and our vacation so we're gonna have four more weeks of garden tours and then we're gonna take a break for a month and check how the garden is going to be doing when we come back from that if you're new here I have this small urban garden here in the backyard of my rental apartment in another bigger space down the street from me where my neighbor allows me to garden there too so we're going to start here in the backyard today I want to show you the raised beds first and there's something exciting happening too. We have some tomatoes here in the backyard. They're almost ready to pick and I'm so excited about them. So I can't wait to show them to you guys too. But let's start with the raised bed first. The raised beds looking a lot nicer than last week in my opinion. Mainly because I decided to take out the ranunculus that was dying and yellowing and not looking very nice. So just from doing that, taking out the ranunculus, made everything kind of look a lot better of course i have a lot of space in here now those are the ranunculus that i lifted so this is how the corns look like they're still hydrated they haven't dried yet but that's how they looked they even look now that i'm seeing putting some new root growth here but oh well i couldn't keep them in there anymore but you can see how they multiplied there's a new corn here another one here so we're gonna have a lot more for next year if i can store and dry this properly I am leaving them here with the tops because it was easier for me to tag and identify them but as soon as they dry a little bit more I'm gonna go ahead and remove the tops and I'm going to try to store them for the next season. Let's see if it's going to work out. If you have any tips on drying storing ranunculus please let me know. I'm not gonna leave them out in the sun here they were just here so I can show you guys but I'm going to put them in a shady spot to dry a little bit more than I plan to put them inside to finish drying fully. So this fever feel here Remember last time I had just fixed, it was falling, flopping over, I had just put the string over here, and but they were all kind of facing to the side. Now they are all sort of straight, they're still facing a bit to this side because they're under this tree and they're reaching for light. But they are all fully open at this point, so they're good for drying. I was reading and they said if you want to dry you can pick them when they're fully open. There's a seal of minimum amount of blooms I haven't opened yet so I'm going to harvest this this week I was gonna harvest last week but I was waiting to see if they would get a little bit straighter they didn't it is what it is it's okay but it's time for me to start harvesting them before they get too old here check out the dahlia that was just about to open it's the same the Linda's baby my favorite so far I mean how can you really pick a favorite look at that one back there but she's fully open now last week she was about like this when I showed you guys, so it's, I think it takes a full week for them to get nice and beautifully open like this. This one here, also looking really good. It's a different one than it was here before. It's another bud, I had harvested that or what the one because it got too old. And there's another one about to open here. The lilies are also looking better. I think the ladybug larva is really working on clearing the aphids. It had so many aphids on them, but now it's looking completely clean, so I'm super grateful for beneficial insects. I did not purchase them, they just naturally moved into my garden, which is really good. And they really helped me out with the aphid infestation that I was having. And it's so nice to see how much nicer the garden is looking right now. The calendula now has more space too. It has really picked up after I cleaned up the ranunculus. I decided to move a few things that were in these spots in here because as, as i mentioned we're going to be gone for a while and i thought that if they stay on the ground they have a better chance to make it so slowly i start transitioning things around this here is escabiosa pincushion flower i believe i think it's about to bloom it's grown a lot too since last week so that's really nice and I put it the cherry caramel flux, which was in a pot in here too. It's all harvested now, so you can see the blooms, but there's another bud that's gonna open probably by next week. I have some open and I'll show you guys how it looks like. So here's how she looked like when she's in bloom. This is the cherry caramel flux and I really, really liking this. It's so nice to put it on bouquets and pair with the dahlias. I might even also 
once I cut this a little shorter, I might transfer it to the raised bed too. So I'll have more of this when I come back because it's just so nice. I really like the color combination of those. Okay, coming back over here. So that was that. And up here, look at this beauty. We have the Cornell Bronze Dahlia that's about to open too. And check this out. She has one petal that's pink. <laughs> I don't know if you can see in the camera, but she's mostly this beautiful bronze color. And then there's one, there's one petal here that's kind of pink or lilac. Oops, it's hard to see. When it opens, hopefully by next week I can show you guys. But I thought that was pretty cool. One more thing I did that's also helping everything look nice. I pruned out all of the yellow leaves of the bottom leaves of almost everything while I was harvesting the ranunculus. Look how tall the sunflowers are. So the sunflowers don't have a lot of leaves in there. I also felt that that was shading a lot of the stuff back here. So everything is looking a lot nicer after I did that. And the dahlias too. I pruned the bottom leaves to make sure there's more airflow and nothing's touching the ground and any of that. Same thing that I do with my tomatoes. So very happy about the results. It's looking very nice. The poppies are blooming last week. They have gone to seed. So I mentioned that I wanted to save the seeds from this. This is an Iceland poppy champagne bubbles on the pink. And the pods are very small in this variety compared to the other poppies. I'll show you the other pods. Those are small, but they produce a lot of seed. And once this dry, hopefully I can show you guys how you can like collect seed from those. And then there's another one just cracking. If I was gonna harvest, you can harvest at this stage. It's called a cracking bud stage and you can see the color inside. And that will give you more time in the vase. This poppy, I guess, is known for having a much better vase life than other poppies and sometimes you can get five to seven days out of this i got five days never seven but still it's pretty cool because they're so pretty the fever few here that remember last week was just starting to open it's almost in full bloom so this is a different variety this is called tetra white and has double blooms it's very pretty different than that one with the singles so i think i like this one a lot better i like both of them because they look quite different actually but this one is very nice and you're supposed to also harvest them when most of the blooms are open. I harvest some that were not and they just flopped. So I need to do lots of practicing this week with flower arrangements too. So I'm going to hopefully harvest some of them, but they're gorgeous. And they, their stems are stronger. They're thicker stems. I feel like they look a lot nice and upright the other one has thinner stems and bending a little bit more but i don't know maybe it's just the conditions that i'm giving them but this is how pretty is this i'm really hoping that this perennializes the one in there it's from last year it just came back on its own actually never really died in the winter it was very resilient i always had some greens even through the cold blast that we had you know she always tried to come back up so this was planted last year and came back this year and if this one does that too I'll be really really happy because they are gorgeous back here real quick we have dahlia that's from the mix so some of my dahlias I know who they are <laughs> I bought tuber specific varieties like the Cornell Browns the Linda's baby that one was from a mix but this one is from I lost the tag so I don't know which mix that's from even I'm thinking this is gonna be a light variety I don't know but there I have three this one I pinched so I have three main stems in here and I will start already with more flowers, which is cool. Have some more dahlias back there, some more back there. Not doing as well because I planted them in the back. Some of the snapdragons are starting to bloom here too, which is nice. Been really loving the snapdragons this year. I have harvested so many of them. And the larkspur here, it's gorgeous. Oh, I love this color. This one is almost fully open and then we have these other ones on the side. I did take out a lot of the white teal, like I said I was going to do last week, and I tied those up. So I put a pole in there and I sort of tried to contain them a bit so these guys have a little bit more space because they were flopping over on flopping to the back. So I think that was good. And pruning the sunflowers I also think made a big difference in general for the garden. It just looks so much nicer and everyone in the back you can see all this new green, lighter green growth means that's all new growth and it's been putting a lot of it which is really good i'm very happy to see that oh we have another one here i almost missed this this is a, going to be a white dahlia hopefully it'll be open by next week too and i can show you guys that looks like i think that variety is called blizzard 
And here are the Lysiantas. Look how cool is that? They're finally picking up. I'm, I'm now getting super excited. Before I was like, I don't know if the Lysiantas are gonna work. But now, especially this guy, look how much it grew. Not really sure if you guys can tell in the camera the difference between last week and this week, but for me it looks a lot different. They were like this for a long time, small, and then some of them are picking up. And after now also I cut that, the deal in there, giving them some more air, some more space, some more light. Hopefully they will really pick up a little bit faster. And the cosmos back there is blooming too. So pretty, this is the Cupcake Cosmos. It's really beautiful, nice big blooms, but they get bug damaged very easily so i was reading some of the florette stuff and she said you should pick cosmos before even they open so i think this could be too late i see a bug inside there but maybe this would be a good stage i've got to test it i'm gonna just take some out and put in a vase to see if it opens but that's the cool thing about having these things a little earlier than the wedding i can test a bunch of stuff out and see what works that's what i've been doing a lot too i did not take this deal and i did not take the one from the plot too i had a florist that was gonna come visit us this week to look at my flowers and I wanted to have lots of stuff open it ended up not happening but now I think it's too late for me to keep them in there I have to harvest but they're so they're so nice and I think if they're open like this are oh, the shed some petals you can dry them but it says before the shedding petal stage now I think I'm too late on that maybe some of the other ones I can do I'd love to see how these dry I think it might look very pretty we'll see and the poppies, remember the poppies, the shaggy one? They're a lot more open, they're all kind of like that. There's some just dropped petals right now. So this is the color if you missed the last garden tour. And that first one is this first seed pod here. And then now there's open in the seed pod, the, those are the other seed pods. So they just stay open for two to three days and they all the petals fall. And the seed pods are growing. So lots of people grow pod, poppies for the pods to add in bouquets and to add texture elements. And that's what I'm doing too. <laughs> I'm just watching all these florists and flower farmers and I'm trying to do what they do too. But I'm gonna definitely do that with the poppies. I have some that are most opening the other color in the white there. But this is how the difference between this seed pod and the other one from the Icelandic poppies that I showed you is so small, right? This is a lot bigger and a lot nicer. I think there's a white poppy in here they oh that one is beautiful she's about to open she's probably gonna open by the end of the day today and then they get nice and fluffy and blue this happens see <laughs> a couple days and then they all fall then the seed pod starts developing but i really like this open ones these white ones i had a bunch in the plot yesterday can't guarantee to you guys it's still going to be open because like i said sometimes it just fall but hopefully when we go there you can see how they look like in full bloom here we have the green stalks. They are looking very beautiful, in my opinion. I really like the way the tomatoes, they are filling up this one here. I have two varieties of tomatoes here. This little cherry ones on the red one. And this is a bigger one. And it's a semi-indeterminate, it's called Purple Heart. It's gonna be a bigger tomato. And I got it from Hudson Valley Seed Company. But they're very healthy plants. Look at that. Last year, the cut I got shaded and didn't perform so well, but I really liked the flavor and I thought they would be good in containers and green stock. So this year, I put it in here. They are still big, but very compact. You can see that the leaves grow very close to each other. And I have not pruned this. This is all them growing to the full expression. <laughs> and they're looking really good. This side here, I have the snapdragons. Look how tall the snapdragons are. It's in the last pocket here. And they're going all the way up to there. They're so tall. I'm very happy I added these supports. And we have broccoli here. Very nice this broccoli. I'm eh? getting a lot of cuts from it. I'm impressed. This is from Joni Seeds. I forgot the name. Sweet Stem. Oh, I'll put it on the screen so you know. But I got it from Joni's and it's producing more than I thought it would be and it's very delicious. It's very very tasty broccoli. I'm happy about that. Probably gonna grow again next year for sure. I have lots more seeds. Here are the strawberries. On this planter and they are getting bigger guys look at that whoops so much bigger than last year super exciting i'm not gonna oh i guess i was supposed to harvest them now <laughs> i was gonna say i'm not gonna harvest now but i always wash them before i eat because we have squirrels and things that just don't you know, climb the green stalk sometimes i'm so tempted to eat this because it looks so good but i'll bring it in rinse it real quick and then i'll eat it but they have been really nice and sweet I'll just harvest the rest of them later. 
Here are the tomatoes that I promised. If I wanted to, I actually could harvest them at this stage. When they're orange like this, they will keep ripening inside. Last year when I had tons of it, I was I was harvesting a lot of tomatoes at the blushing stage, more like this, this over here. This is a little farther down, but because these are our first ones, I'm gonna let it ripen the vine. And we're gonna have them the day we picked, or maybe the other day, just to enjoy it to its fullness. The squirrels seem to not have been bothering these tomatoes, this green stalk. They sometimes will crawl around in here, but they're not digging at the green stalks anymore, which is good. They're still digging in my pots and my raised beds, but they were just see, using the green stalks as a pass away. That's why I, I washed the strawberries and etc. But they, I have not seen any nibbled tomatoes. Usually when they eat the tomatoes, they will take a little nibble and they just throw it in the ground. So you obviously know that squirrels are eating it. But it's been good so far. So I'm going to see if I can wait a couple more days so we can harvest this when they're nice, beautiful and red. How exciting is this? We're already going to have our first tomatoes. Now check out the strawberries in here. I've been bad about harvesting the strawberries, okay? <laughs> Look at this. There's so many. I feel bad that uh, some of them are getting a little overripe. I am going to come and harvest, but it's, I'll tell you, they produce a lot. So I know a lot of people have a whole tower for strawberries. Just for Denny and I, I think two plants is good enough. Sometimes even with only two plants, check this out. This is one plant. The two plants I'm talking about is this plant and that plant on the other planter. We have all of this. Now, obviously, I could harvest and freeze, but that's how it works, right? So I would rather eat them fresh if I could. I did slack a bit, obviously, on harvesting. I will do it later. And the ones that got a little bit overripe, I'll just put it in the compost or leave it out for the birds. I feel bad, but, you know, sometimes that happens. The time here is looking really good. It's growing so fast and so beautiful. I love those little purple flowers. This is a lemon flavor variety and super tasty. Lavender, how nice is that? I'm gonna harvest some more. And I'll get a couple more blooms. This lavender actually blooms the whole year. I don't know the name of it. I started from seeing like three years ago, two years ago. It just keeps coming back, which is amazing. And that's mostly it here for the green stalks. So this area here, not looking as nice as I wanted, but it's okay. As I said, we're traveling for a month and potted plants don't tend to do very well if you don't get watered properly. It gets so hot in here that this pot's usually in the summer have to be watered every day sometimes even morning and afternoon so i am not really hopeful that things that are in these potted plants are going to survive through the summer but it's okay because before i leave i'll mulch them really well hopefully we get some rain and then i'm gonna do a new planting when i come back for the fall so i do have a person coming to help me a friend but she can only come once a week. A couple other people offer to help, but it's always hard here in New York because everybody gets so busy. This time is a whole month, so I really would like to see if we can get help at least for once a week, and that will truly help the raised beds and then the green stalks. The green stalks tend to be a bit more resilient than the spotted plants here on the ground. Since they're stacked like that, there's a lot less water evaporation, so I noticed that I have to water these guys a lot less than I do these ones here. So we'll see how it goes, but this is not really gonna be a big part of the garden tours in the garden anymore. Other than the eucalyptus that's looking great and this gorgeous root back here, here too. Up there, there's not much update. The green stalk is looking very similar. Again, I didn't have a chance to go and care for that one very much yet. I really will try to do it this week. But that's about it for the backyard. Now we're going to head to the plot and look how things are doing there. I love this rose here. Every time I pass by, I hope that someone is coming out so I can ask them if I can take a cutting. Isn't it a beautiful color? Maybe one day I'll be able to cross with my neighbors. Too. There's lots of gardens around here in my neighborhood. I live in Queens, so it's not as busy as Manhattan. And this area specifically is a little bit less developed, so there's lots of more space outside where you can have a little bit of a front yard in your rental or a backyard, which is cool. But also, like you can see right now, Lots of people do with shade. I'm very lucky that my backyard also has full sun. So I actually do this walk every morning. Sorry about the motorcycle sound noise. It's my favorite way to start my day. I come here before I go to work, so I wake up very early. I take care of my garden in the backyard first. Then I come walk here and take a look how things are looking in the plot. And sometimes even when I come back from work, now that there's, we have so much daylight, I still come back to the plot 
to look at it again because things are growing so fast that if I see a bloom that's about to open in the morning, I'm like, I have to go check. Oh my God, even the birds got scared. I really think that the honking here in New York is completely unnecessary. I lived in Hawaii for seven years before here and no one honked in there and it was great. But anyway, get into the plot right now. It's in a little alleyway, it's a little hidden. Oh, the puppies are open. Look at that, just check them out from outside before we go in. <gasps> so many of them. They're gorgeous. Isn't it cool? I love coming here to the plot early in the morning when the sun is just starting to rise and the light's still nice and soft. It's just so pretty. Great way to start the day. I'm so excited about these puppies and I'm so happy that they're blooming too. Let's catch right to the tour. This is how the plot's looking from its entrance. I just heard a bit of construction noise, but I'll have to keep going the tour because I have a really busy day today and I don't have time to reshoot, so we're just gonna have to go with it. I'm so sorry, you guys. But hopefully you can still enjoy the beautiful flowers. So let's start here with the grapes. We did have lots of grapes last year. They got all eaten by the birds, but now it looks like we have a lot more and we'll see what happens this year. We'll be gone again for a month, so I am really thinking that uh, birds are gonna, look at this, eat them all again. It's gonna be all snack for them. And I don't really manage this grape vine well. I was gonna cut it, but now I was talking to my neighbor that's the owner of the pot, and he's like, wow, but the grapes look so nice. Maybe we should just let them grow. Let's just look at this puppy here. Oh, I have a bean side. <laughs> Sorry, B, I disturbed you. But that's it's like the one that I, white one I showed in the garden and my backyard would be. Some of the yarrow have also bloomed. Oh, I'm so sad about the noise, but if I don't film today, I'm not gonna have time to post on the weekend. So, you know what, let's do something different. I think I'm just gonna walk uh, around and show all of the blooms to you guys and maybe put some music in the background. Mm -hmm.
Hey guys, it's the next day. I wanted to hop in here real quick just to film a little ending for this video. And just a couple more things before I end. I have a the fever fuel. Look at that. Isn't it so pretty? I love this. I'm gonna put in the center of my table at home. I actually have a set a lot earlier this morning. I just bought it in so I could show it to you guys. In the Cornell bronze, the dahlia behind me, it opened. I thought it was gonna open in another week, but it just decided to open the next day. So I'll give you guys a close up of that in the next update as well. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time.